Welcome back to the brushing review series in which I am in search for the perfect round size 10 brushes and get to know different ones. In this episode, we are looking at the Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin, which is different from the Da Vinci Cosmotop Mix B that we had previously, which I will link up here so that you can compare the two. The round is a series 5580 and as always it's size 10 and it's made of synthetic fibers. The promo for it says the blending and placement of five different diameters of fine synthetic filaments make this brush perform like natural hair and that's from Blick. It is suitable for all liquids, especially watercolor and silk painting, which is new. Normally they don't say silk painting, but for this one, they do say that. The size ranges from 10 over zero to 30, and then they also have a 40. The overall brush size is pretty average at 23.5. However, the bristle feels thinner and longer, or they just feel longer when it's wet. It's not that it's any longer than other brushes. It's at 2.7 centimeters and most brushes come in about that, but it is at 5.6 millimeter diameter, whereas most normal size 10 brushes come at about 6 point something millimeter for the diameter. So because it's a little bit thinner, it does feel like the bristle is longer for some reason. And so that is something to look out for. It's definitely something I noticed while I was painting with this brush. Let us do the snap test. So it's pretty snappy. But as you can see, they just feel longer than, say, this is another one that I'm going to be reviewing. You can see that this is narrower and a little bit longer than this brush, but it just feels thin and long. It is a firm brush and you can definitely feel that when you wet the brush and then you start painting with it. And I can see why they say it's good for silk painting, because for silk painting, you've you do want that little bit of bounce and firmness in the brush to get the paint into the fibers. It is a very smooth brush for putting down the paint and you can go pretty fast with it. But however, I did notice that when it's wet, the tip seems to be very slightly bent and you can see that here and if you can't see it I will put up a high res scan of this test sheet up on over on my patreon patreon.com forward slash autocano so you can have a really good look at this I found that the direction of where the tip was going to go wasn't really up to me and this is how the brush looks when it's wet you can see that it's a little tiny bit bent on here and it came like this and I've tried to stretching it a few times, but it's not as bad as the ones we've tried before where the tip was bent, but it's just a little bit annoying. But other than that, it comes to a very fine point. The release up and down, I noticed that the edges kind of tend to break up a bit, whereas some other brushes we've looked at in the test haven't done that. So that was a little bit annoying for me. I think this brush is less about dragging paint across the page, but more pushing paint into a certain area as you would do in a silk painting. The max width, as you can see again, it runs out of paint pretty quickly on the edges. And um, let's look at the width is about 1.7 centimeters. For the belly drag, you can see that it's very dry. So it'll be good if you want to do dry brushing. And thank you, by the way, to those of you who commented that actually belly drag is really useful for knowing if the brush is good at doing dry brushing. So we now know what a belly drag is good for. As for thin lines, you can get pretty thin lines, but I would say that for the range of thickness, you don't have a huge amount. These aren't the thinnest of thin lines that 
I've managed to create was brushes and the tip does feel like a little bit blunt rather than pointed. And then for the max width, it doesn't spread out that much because you don't have that width and, and therefore you don't have the density of brush to spread out. For the leaf, it's the same thing as the release up and down in that the edges break. So again, it's not very good for pulling paint across a page, although you might be looking for this kind of look. It just depends on what you are after from your brush. For snaking, again, as we've seen, the edges break up a lot, but that's not a bad thing if that's what you're looking for. For the flat wash, I used two loads of paint on the brush. So I would say it's a relatively high amount of water that is held in this brush for such a thin brush as well, because the ones that really don't hold the water, we have to do it many, many times. So to be able to do it in two loads without this being a malt brush is pretty good. As for gradation, I actually had a really good time with the gradation. I had good water control and you can push the water off the brush just by rubbing it on the edge of the jar really well. So I felt like I had good control and because it's a little bit firmer, if any paint needed coaxing along further down, then you could do that. As for the lift, it's pretty good, but it's quite blurry. And you'll see in the next few episodes, it's not the best at lifting, even though it's a pretty firm brush. As for the dashes, you get quite even dashes, but you get what I would call tadpoles, where the beginning of the dash is fatter and rounder than the rest. And as you go faster, that gets worse. So that's definitely something to look out for. Would I recommend this brush? I wouldn't not recommend this brush, as in I wouldn't discourage you from getting this brush because it's not a bad brush. And if you're looking for a particular look, like if you want the broken edges as a look, maybe you're going for a little bit more rustic look in your painting, then this will do that consistently. Whereas other brushes, I found that they don't break up the edges consistently. I can definitely say this brush is a good brush for silk painting, but it's better for silk painting than it is for watercolour, I personally feel. There isn't huge amount of, you know, bad water offloading, but it's also not the best either. So um, I personally wouldn't buy this brush for myself because it doesn't do good thin lines, it breaks the edges and if you remember from the first episode one of the things I really wanted to be able to do with my brushes was do botanical paintings like illustrations and having these leaves break up isn't the style that I'm personally looking for but I have also definitely seen other people use these styles that look fantastic. That's it for this brush. What did you think of this brush? Do let me know in the comments down below. If you have this brush and you love it, then do let me know in the comments down below, as well as if you have used this brush and you haven't liked it, do let us know why you haven't enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Next episode is gonna be the Da Vinci Casaneo. So do look out for that next week. Thank you for watching and do hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet and the like button and comment away because that all really helps. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye!